All right, this is a direct monitor comparison video, and uh, yeah, the camera angle's, again, a very weird one. I have to stand further back from this desk than I would like, unless I wanna get nice and low like this. Anyway, the emphasis is on the two monitors at hand here, so uh, we'll be showing you plenty of B-roll. I know it's gonna be difficult to translate on camera what these two screens look like in person. I've done my best to calibrate them, what, what I think is the comfort zone for each of these panels. This one tends to be a bit warmer than this one, but this is an IPS panel, so the color accuracy here is going to be a bit uh, above par, whereas this one is more of the, the new and improved TN technology. Viewing angles are much better than the older TN stuff, but it's still going to warp colors just a little bit, and you're not gonna get that excellent color accuracy that this one here from Pixio has. So what we're gonna do in this video is narrow down the use case scenarios for each of these panels, talk about what you should be looking for in your next monitor depending on your work case. And uh, these two are very different. They look similar, but they're very different and they have different target audiences. So we're gonna talk about that and uh, also talk about some of the specs you should look out for. sick of seeing the same activation watermark with your shiny new rig, snag an OEM Windows 10 Pro key from SCD Key. Even if you've already installed Windows 10 on your machine, you can shell out a little over 10 bucks for an authentic key that'll activate your copy. Click the link below and use offer code SStudio for an 18% discount on your order. So let's run through the specs of each panel first. This here on my left is the ViewSonic XG240R. It's a 24 inch 1080p, one millisecond, 144 hertz. TN panel with FreeSync built in and eye care technology, so it's not gonna be as hard on your eyes. Uh, and then this over here is the Pixio PX275H. It is a 1440p, 95 hertz IPS display, and it has beautiful color reproduction. So if you can't already tell, this is the gaming monitor. At least that's what they want you to think. This is targeted toward gamers. I mean, you've even got RGB on the back of this thing, and you're not gonna pay much for it. I mean, relatively speaking, about 240 or 50 US D is a pretty good price for what you're getting here. 1080p, 144 hertz. I'm not seeing much ghosting at all on this panel, which is a good improvement. A lot of the ViewSonic panels I've had in the past, uh, even a couple Viatech panels I've had, had terrible ghosting issues. And I'm happy to say that this one has none of that. Now the Pixio panel is priced similarly, about 250 USD again, but it's got a much lower refresh rate. It's only 95 hertz versus 144. Can you tell the difference? Obviously not on camera. Filming at 30 FPS, there's no way this will translate accurately, but if you are here in person, yes, you will be able to tell the difference. I don't care if you've been playing consoles your whole life or not. I have, I've started with a PlayStation 1, moved on to a PS2, then an Xbox 360, then an Xbox One, now a PS4 Pro. I only recently got into PC gaming, I mean, about five or six years ago. And this was a huge step up for me in the visual department. And it helps tremendously, especially with first person shooters. And this is really where I want you to start considering your use case, because if you only play games on your PC, then a higher refresh rate panel at the expense of color reproduction is probably the way to go. And if you're willing to stay around 250 bucks, you're gonna have compromises either way. This one obviously doesn't have the highest refresh rate, but it has amazing color reproduction. This one has a really high refresh rate, but the colors, eh, they're a little bland, let's say. So if you're worried about the fast paced movements, getting everything picked up on screen, because again, your screen is refreshing 144 times per second, then you're gonna want the ViewSonic monitor. So then let's focus on a few of the negatives associated with such an affordable 144 Hertz panel like this ViewSonic XG240R. The biggest drawback is of course, the fact that twisted pneumatic or TN technology is used in place of something like VA or IPS. And the way you'll know that it's a TN panel is if you see no indication that it's anything else on the product page. Companies like ViewSonic and Pixio tend to stay away from actually advertising the fact that it's a TN panel and there's a good reason for that. It's just not a preferred technology. In terms of how good this TN technology is, I've seen considerably worse. TN technology has improved quite a bit over the years and viewing angles are nowhere near as bad as they used to be. What I mean by that is you can actually read legibly text on screen, for example, from nearly 170 degrees off center. Good luck doing that with older TN panels. But where the TN technology starts to show its weakness is in color reproduction, especially when viewing off center. You can see that from center, this purple background actually looks pretty good. But when you swing over to the side, it looks way out of whack. Now there of course is the argument that, well, if it's my panel and it's my PC, I'm gonna be sitting right in front of it so I'll never have to view the panel from a far corner or something like that. And obviously, yes. The trade-off though is that your friends, if they're watching from the sides, might not see the same picture you do. 
it's something that I think is a worthy compromise, especially in this price category. So if you're a baller on a budget and that's one of the things keeping you from buying TN, I say you should throw that notion out the window and still opt for it because who cares? It's about you when you're the one gaming. As for the PX275H, things are going to be a bit slower. 95 hertz versus 144 hertz is pretty distinguishable to the human eye, and it is not going to give you as smooth a gaming experience, especially in fast-paced games like CSGO and Black Ops 4. Ghosting is a slight issue on the Pixio panel, but again, this is not the target audience. We're not intending to game on this all the time. In fact, I probably won't be doing much of it at all. And if I do, it's going to be a slow-paced game, maybe something like City Skylines or or, uh, I don't know, Park Attack, something like that. Uh, if I'm playing CSGO or PUBG or Battlefield 1, I'm probably gonna wanna switch to the ViewSonic panel. Even though colors won't look as great, it'll be a much smoother experience, and I won't see as much ghosting thanks to that one millisecond response time on that XG240R. Other things you should know about this Pixio panel. The monitor stand included is not very versatile, meaning if you wanna turn the panel left or right, you have to swing the entire setup, including the base below it. You have a little bit of breathing room, swinging the monitor up, swinging it down, however, you get no play there at all. And then raising or lowering the monitor is impossible unless you wanna use the good old classic textbook method and just stuff books underneath the entire stand because that's the only way this is gonna get any higher than it is. Also, if you want it lower, there's no way to lower it. So there's that. As for the ViewSonic monitor, much easier to deal with. If you wanna raise the monitor, you just push it up. If you wanna lower the monitor, you just push it down. If you wanna swing it left or right, Swing it left or right, the base stays where it is. You can swing it the other way as well. About this far here, so I would say almost 45 degrees from center. And then if you also want to pivot the monitor up and down, you have that flexibility as well. So definitely targeted toward gamers here. Gamers want to, you know, they want to fine tune the monitor position because it's, it's ideal to have this in the place that is more comfortable for you, uh, especially when you're playing some fast paced games, you obviously want this where it's most comfortable. I shouldn't have to explain this, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, the Pixio panel is something that I would prefer you put on a vase mount. That way you can be more flexible if you choose to use that for gaming. Uh, otherwise, if you wanna use it for content creation, you should just keep it where it is and just adjust your seat so that you can sit directly in front of it and not have to work off center. Another thing I appreciate about the ViewSonic monitor is the integrated AC adapter. You don't have to have an external brick hanging from your desk. If you're a cable management junkie like me, I know it kind of looks a little rough over there now because I had to remove that PC, uh, but I like hiding my cables and it's very difficult to hide a huge brick and the Pixio monitor does have a huge brick. I mean, it's not enormous, but uh, it's gonna be difficult to hide, needless to say. I'm not gonna talk much about the OSDs with both of these panels because they're pretty straightforward. You get about four or five buttons on each. You get dedicated uh, left and right or up and down toggles, as well as a dedicated power button, a menu button, and an exit button on each. Again, it's pretty self-explanatory and I had no trouble navigating through either on-screen display. So if that's a concern of yours, I wouldn't sweat it, especially in this price category. I'm impressed with both, but it's not something that I'm going to take a lot of time to explain to you because it's self-explanatory. Now, with all that said, you might be thinking to yourself, well, this seems like the obvious choice. I mean, the majority of us game, we build PCs to game on, right? So why wouldn't you choose this for around $250? And I would say most of you probably should. You can fine tune individual colors, like your reds, your greens, and blues. You can you know, improve to an extent color reproduction on this TN panel, which I should say the technology has massively improved again. Uh, TN tends to get a bad rep on places like Reddit and even in YouTube comment sections because if you have an IPS panel, TN's for peasants, right? Nobody wants to buy TN if you can afford IPS. And yeah, IPS does look better, but when you're only paying 250 bucks for a high refresh rate panel like this and you can still fine tune individual colors and get it looking decent at least, I'd say this is way better value than an IPS counterpart that's gonna cost around 100 to 150 bucks more. In fact, most of the gaming panels in this price category are TN panels for a few reasons. First, it's a cheap technology, relatively speaking, and two, it's easier to overclock these panels. So reaching 144 hertz is a breeze for this, whereas with IPS technology, it's a bit more difficult. And when you move up to something like OLED, it's even more difficult. So yes, a majority of you should choose this. I've got it linked in the video description if you wanna check it out. I'm choosing though the PX275H. Actually, I'm choosing two of them and you'll find out why in the next video. But for what I do, a majority of, and that's content create, I need accurate colors. 100% sRGB color spectrum in this panel. That's pretty impressive, especially at this price category. And you're still getting a 95 Hertz panel at that. So it's kind of a happy medium for me personally. It's a bigger panel. I like 27 inch panels and 
they're affordable. There are downsides to pretty much every monitor on the market, right? You just have to weigh the pros and cons of each and decide which is the best value given your use case scenario. So if I had to ballpark it, I'd say roughly 90% of you should choose this panel right here or something comparable. If you something did a great job with the XG240R, we covered it a bit at CES and I was excited to get my hands on it because it did look like a great panel for the price. There are several panels in this category, so you can shop around if you'd like but uh, this one has my seal of approval. Yeah, the colors are a bit out of whack, but you can fine tune those in the OSD and the refresh rate and the response time are just fantastic for this price. So that's my take. What do you guys think about both of these panels here? If you really enjoyed this video, let me know by giving this one a thumbs up. I appreciate it. You can find links to both of these panels again down below in the video description, along with a few others I've tested in the past, not just from Pixio and ViewSonic, but from Viatech and uh, even from LG and Asus. Plenty of options out there, and that's a good thing. With that, let me know in the comments below if you have any questions or concerns and what you'd like to see next on the channel. If you like the video, thumbs up. You know what to do. Click that red subscribe button. I'm sure my head's looking really huge with this uh, camera angle right now, but uh, it was an unorthodox video with very big products, so I kind of had to make do with the space I have. I can't wait to move into our house we're building soon. We're building a house and we're moving to Orlando and I'm really excited about that because we're gonna have so much more space to do so many cool things on the channel and uh, yeah, I, I hope you guys are as excited as I am. Probably not, because it's it's not your house, but I mean, you're gonna be in it, at least on video, so be a nice change of pace. Anyway, this is Science Studio. Thanks for watching and thanks for viewing with us.